the energy on a single circuit using a watt node and a Hobo U30. Once again, we'll be doing this on our display panel board, which is de-energized so we can focus on the equipment installation. If this was a live panel board, I'd be wearing the necessary safety gear. We'll start out by identifying a safe location for our watt node. For this installation, we'll use the bottom of this panel board right here. We'll locate our CTs on these conductors for this 50 amp circuit, and our voltage leads can either go up here or down here, or if available, they can go on these conductors. These panel boards are wired phase A, B, and C, left to right, and top to bottom. We'll start by wiring our CTs to the watt node. We'll use a split core current transformer. Again, these are directional. I've also labeled the CTs black, red, and blue to represent the phase colors. These line up with the colors on the watt node as well as the colors in the electrical panel. We start out by wiring the black CT to the phase A terminal to the white and black terminals. We'll then wire the red CT to our phase B terminal. Once again, the white wire will go on the white terminal and black wire will go on the black terminal. And lastly, our phase C CT, the blue, will get wired to the phase C of the watt node. We're now ready to plug our voltage leads into the watt node. For this, we'll use the watt node lead set available from onset. This particular lead set is double insulated and rated for 1,000 volts. Now that our watt node is pre-wired, it's ready to install. We'll place the watt node in the location where we've determined. We can now run the onset pulse input adapter cable to our watt node. We'll do so using the listed fitting to bring our cable into the panel board. And we'll wire it directly to the watt node. This cable has a black and white conductor the black will be connected to the common, and the white wire will be connected to P1. Normally, we will not use P2 and P3. Now that everything is wired to the watt node, we can begin connecting our CTs to the phase conductors. We will start with the black phase A CT. This will go around the black conductor on our circuit. Once again, this particular CT is directional, so we want to make sure the arrow faces the source, or in this case, faces the center of the panel board. And this CT just clips shut to know we have a secure connection. We'll now move on to the red, phase B. Make sure the arrow faces the source, and this will go around the red conductor of our circuit. And lastly, our blue CT, phase C, will go around the blue conductor. and we'll want to tuck the CTs in deep enough to allow for the enclosure cover to be installed. 
we'll neaten our CT wires, and then we can move on to our voltage leads. We'll start with the green ground voltage lead. This can be connected to any part of the metal in the enclosure or one of the two ground bus bars in this panel. For this, we'll connect it up in this corner. We want to make sure it's nice and secure, and we'll run the cable safely along out of the way of the other cables. The next connection will be the white neutral voltage lead. In this particular panel, the neutral bus bar is on this side and this side, and for convenience, we'll go right over here. Again, we'll make sure we have a good secure connection, and we'll neaten up our lead. Our next connection will be our phase conductors. These are the most dangerous connections we'll be making. For this, we'll connect our black phase A right over here. And once again, it's very important that the connection is solid and also not touching any other metal. We'll do the same with the red phase B conductor. We'll test our connection, make sure it's solid, and ensure that it's not touching any other phases. And finally, our blue phase C conductor will go to this bus bar right here, which is connected to phase C. Once we have our voltage leads in place, we can use a zip tie to organize them. And we'll tuck them out of the way of the enclosure cover. We'll want to see the indicator lights on the watt node once we repower the circuit. We can now plug in our onset pulse input adapter cable to our Hobo U30 into any smart sensor port available. And now we're ready to launch our data. If launch. you're going to connect your watt node and your pulse input adapter to an RX3000 station and get your data from the web, you need to use the HoboLink web product to set up the pulse scaling for each one of your pulse input adapters. I'm logged into a, uh, an RX3000 we have here at the, at the facility that's monitoring energy with watt nodes and pulse input adapters. I, there's actually two circuits being monitored here. And I wanted to show you how to configure it. So again, very similar configuration as to what Matt was showing us. Um, we're using the watt node and some CTs for each one of these. This is two pulse input adapters. So the way we would um, configure this is we would go on to the, and again, the logger, all it sees is, is the pulse input adapter. We gave it this name here. But if we click on the little uh, tool icon, we can see down here, product code SUCC. That's the, the, the solid state pulse input adapter. And this is where we can configure it for monitoring uh, kilowatt hours using the watt node. And here is a typical multi multiplier. Again, we got this right out of the lookup table in the watt node manual based on voltage and CT size. These values are built into Hoboware Pro into the data assistant, the KWH assistant. So you don't, they're transparent to you. All you have to do is put in the model number of the watt node, which is coded for voltage and the size of the CT. So if you need help configuring your Hobolink scaling here for your pulse input adapter, there are two little green icons right here. One says KWH, one says KW. If you click on the KWH one, it takes you right to that lookup table. So uh, we're using, again, we're using, uh, in this particular application, we're using 3Y208 um, uh, watt node, and we're using 50 MCTs. So there's our scale factor right there. If we go back, you can see 0 0.00125. So that's our multiplier times pulses, and that gets us our, our uh, accurate data. And then you can give it a name. You know, your units will be KWH. If you wanted to do average power in kilowatts, there's a scale factor for that. You can either do one or the other for the same input. You can't do both. Uh, in HoboWare, when you're using a U30 energy logger, uh, microstation, you can get both of those channels recorded. Uh, if, with the HoboLink product and the RX3000, you either get one or the other. You can't get both. So here is how we configure our 
our um, device or our channel. And again, keep in mind these are uh, by serial number. There's our serial number right there. So hierarchical serial number order they're listed in by default. However, Hobolink gives you the ability to uh, rearrange them the way they're displayed on the screen. I can show you how to do that right now. Uh, let's X out of that. Um, basically, if you're logged in as an administrator like I am, you can just grab the second one and drag it up to the top and plop it in there and it that shows up first now and you can see the graph does that too. In the graphical data you can see this is the the 15 minute data here and then here is your totalized values per day, per week, and per month and you can turn that off if you want if you don't want to see those totals.